Hello everybody, my name is Novi and welcome back to the channel. Full Gear is only a week away, which means the Continental Classic is only just over a week away. That is because Mark Briscoe confirmed that it would begin on the November 27th episode of Dynamite. I couldn't be more excited, not just because we're going to be seeing some pretty sick matches on AEW pretty soon, but because of the way the C2 completely overhauls AEW's usual format. It forces them to go match heavy on the TV with meaningful matches, no less. It makes their social media so much more fun to follow because of the promos that we see after those matches. And it makes for some pretty great discussion in the IWC, which is not something we're usually used to seeing. So in this anticipatory state, I thought what better than to give you guys my build for the Continental Classic this year. My picks for entrance, finalists, winner, all that good stuff. I would predict the tournament, but again this year, they don't want people to have fun building out their brackets like it's March Madness. So this isn't necessarily a predictions video, it's a mix of that and also what I would personally like to see in this year's C2. Before we get underway though, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel because as you all know, we're always talking grabs. So for me personally, I would like to see the number of entrants in the C2 go up to 16 from the 12 they did the first time around. That would give room for more wrestlers to be showcased, which is important for a roster like the one AEW has. But since unfortunately they haven't really alluded to that being the case, I'm going to stick with 12 for this video. Even if, like I said, I would like that number to be adjusted. So for the first entrant, let's get him out of the way because of course he's already been announced, Kazuchika Okada. He's of course defending his continental title and with all his G1 experience, which was shown on TV, which I love, he should be a force to be reckoned with. I could very easily see him going undefeated too, just because of the credibility that he holds. But because of some of the names that I'm about to list off, I'm not gonna say that for sure just yet. Also, I forgot to mention, this will be sorted into the Gold and Blue Leagues. That's how it's formatted, that's how I'm gonna format it and Okada is the first entrant into the Gold League. Following him up in that block though is just one of his many New Japan rivals, Switchblade Jay White. The reason why he's here is one, because I know that Tony Khan would wanna run back his matchup with Okada. That's just the kind of guy he is. And two, I think last year's C2 did a lot for his credibility and I'd like to do that again. It's important that he wrestles in a tournament like this. I mean, it's perfect for him. And also it's even more perfect because he just recently went over to being a babyface. So with all that, there's no doubt he'll be returning for his second C2 this year. As for the next four names, however, they're all going to be first timers in the Continental Classic. And we're kicking that off with none other than Hangman Adam Page. Hangman is in a tricky spot at the moment because while he's involved with some pretty big time feuds, he doesn't necessarily seem to be progressing as a character or up the card, which is something I was worried about post Swerve. And now I feel like my worries were justified. They just kind of struggle with giving him consistently engaging stuff to do across the TV throughout the year, if I'm being honest. And as a big time hanger fan, like pretty much all of you know at this point, I'm sure, it can be hard not to crash out sometimes. But what I will say is that the C2 solves almost all of those problems instantly. High stakes, big matches, and a chance to solidify him as someone vying for the world title or just any title in general is perfect for Hangman right now and it's exactly why I want him in here. Moving forward to our fourth Gold League participant, we have a returning cowboy in Bandito. Bandito has been out since June 2023, which is over a year at this point. And for me personally, I've desperately missed him since uh, I'd say about June 2023. I think some people, since it's been so long, might even forget how good he was. He's charismatic even with the mask on, it's probably his biggest strength. He's insanely skilled in the technical game, and also, maybe most of all, he's just cool as fuck. And I'd say of all the places he could potentially be slotted back into when he returns, the C2 is the best of all of them because of its emphasis on match quality. And if I know Bandito, he's gonna give you some quality matches. So I would absolutely put him in here, and I would specifically put him in the Gold League, which is the Dynamite block, because I think that there's real potential for him to become a real 
main event star. And because of that, I want as many eyes as I can get on Bandito when he makes his return. Now, let's kick it over to another sick wrestler under a mask, the Beast Mortos, who joins as the fifth entrant into the Gold League. I think after all these guys, all straight grapplers, there needs to be at least one big crazy dude in the block. Not just that though, I think if you also need a big man to steady the ship, to provide a different kind of match, to provide a great base for these guys to work off of, the Beast Mortos is the best pick. We know because of the year that he's had on AEW TV, where they've consistently relied on him to put on great matches. So much so that they gave him a spot on Wrestle Dream, a big time pay-per-view and a two out of three falls match against Hologram on the back of that great work, which all in all is a very attractive trait for a C2 entrant. Plus, it's also good to get some La Faction and Gobernables representation in this tournament, considering they just formed together as a group. However, However, there was a group that recently came together who also need some representation pretty badly, and that's of course, the Death Riders. The issue is though, who do I pick amongst the three names Claudio, Pac, and Yuta? Those are three great wrestlers who I think could have excellent matches in this tournament, but I think of the three, I have to go with Wheeler Yuta. Last year, the C2 featured Daniel Garcia as the young up-and-comer trying to make a name for himself amongst the elite of the elite. And while I think Wheeler is a lot more established, given the fact that he's, you know, a part of the world champions group, and also because he's one third of the trio's champions, I think him having a couple of great matches with great talents on his resume is really important. Now, this isn't to say I would sit here and give him a bunch of wins. I think you fully go the DG route and give him all losses, but one. But like I said, it's also important that he's working high level matches with very good talent, especially because I think they see a lot in Yuta, and look, I'm not gonna lie, I do too. So now that we've gone over our six Gold League entrants, let's recap. We have Kazuchika Okada, Jay White, Hangman Adam Page, Bandito, The Beast Mortos, and Wheeler Yuta making up our Gold League. And before I give any predictions, I want to get into the Blue League, so let's jump right in. Kicking things off, I think we have to go with a name that I immediately penciled in for this tournament as soon as they made their debut. Ricochet. I don't even think I need to go into depth with all this. I'm sure you all understand why he's here, to be honest. He's pretty perfect for a tournament like this, and I think it'll be a good way to establish him further, especially if he's challenging Zack Sabre Jr. at the Tokyo Dome in January. I'd also say that since coming to AEW, even though he's not necessarily totally for me, Ricochet has been pretty great. And honestly, the one thing that I could truly complain about those damn gloves, he finally fixed. So he's for sure a part of this year's C2, as well as his tag team partner not too long ago, the recently returned Powerhouse Hobbs. Hobbs is a guy similar to Roosh of last year, where I think the goal of this tournament is to just show what he can do. I think we're all well aware that he has the look of a top guy, and I could see the potential there too, but the thing is, I don't think we're fully aware of how good he is in the ring. He's been in AEW for just over four years, and I think the potential has been pretty obvious for that entire time. And while we've seen glimpses of what he can really do, I'm still waiting for him to fully break through. So why not test him in a tournament like this? That way you can really see where he's at and then you can adjust accordingly moving forward. Another guy I'd like to see that done with is honestly Kyle O'Reilly, who is the third entrant into the Blue League. It's definitely not in the same way. Don't get things confused. Kyle O'Reilly is certainly not a prospect. But since he's come back, he's been really good. And when he left, he was getting pushed pretty hard. So I'd like to see what he can do wrestling in a format like this to really see if we can give him that push again. I'd also say that there's, you know, a little bit of bias here. He's definitely one of my guys, but I think my reasoning makes sense, especially given the fact that the fourth entrant into the Blue League is going to be his conglomeration stablemate, Mark Briscoe. He's only the second returning name from last year's C2 alongside Jay White. And I think the return from Mark is even more justified because he was my personal MVP of that tournament last year. He just injected so much life into that block and he was having fun matches with literally everyone. And I would have no doubts that he'd be able to do that same thing this year, considering that's exactly what he's been doing 
this year. I mean, having matches as fun as the ones he's had with Chris Jericho in his current state should get him a fat Christmas bonus at the very least. And I'd also say just to praise him a little more, it's a testament to just how good Mark Briscoe is. You always need a fun wrestler in a tournament like this. And I think Mark, above anyone else, is the perfect choice for that role. What you also need in a tournament like this is a real shooter. A guy who's there to kick ass and that's about it. And who better for that than the Hurt Syndicate's own Shelton Benjamin. Being real, I wouldn't have ever picked him for this spot before he debuted. He's almost 50 years old, he's got a lot of miles on those tires, and I wasn't sure what he'd even look like. But guys, I have to say, he is still the gold fucking standard. Still doing crazy shit, still working hard every time, and my god, does that super kick hit like homemade cooking on your soul every single time. I've had a blast watching him in there, and for all the people that were saying, well, he's old and they're just signing another WWE guy, you have been unequivocally proven wrong by the beastness of Shelton Benjamin, which I think can also be said in a very different way about our final entrant into the Blue League, the Don Callis family's own Kyle Fletcher. Now look, I know he's not for everyone, and he still has his issues, but my god has he been good this year, both as a face and so far as a heel. Consistency is the name of the game on that front I'd say, and no matter what kind of match he's working, singles, tag, trios, it doesn't matter. He's an incredible athlete, he looks like a main eventer now, which he should get a ton of credit for. He completely reshaped his body, he grew a ton of mass, and he looks damn good because of it. And for me personally, I'd want the C2 to be a place where he can continue developing how he's going to work in the ring as a heel singles wrestler. I'm not saying he goes far or anything like that too, I'd compare him to a Claudio Castagnoli of last year to be honest. But I think he definitely deserves a place, and so he's going to be the one rounding out our blue league. Now, let's recap the Blue League before we give out some of our predictions for how this may go. This block will consist of Ricochet, Powerhouse Hobbs, Kyle O'Reilly, Mark Briscoe, Shelton Benjamin, and Kyle Fletcher. Alright now, with all these blocks done, with all 12 entrants listed out for each, how do I see these finals going down? Well, starting with the gold, I think one pick is very easy, Kazuchika Okada is going through. Defending champ, his G1 history was shown on TV, they're building him up to be a force, and I think that will shine through. However, with pick number two, you have a few names there. I'd say the two people that many would immediately point to are Hangman and Switchblade, both very good picks. A block finals would serve either of their characters very well and place a much needed emphasis on either of them in the promotion going forward. However, the name that I'm gonna go with is Bandito to advance to the block finals. This may seem a little crazy given those two other names, but I genuinely think that there is real potential for Bandito to be a huge star for AEW. And while it's definitely not impossible, it's much more difficult to build him up on TV than it would be for Hanger or Swerve. So using this match-focused tournament to establish him fully post-return would be the smartest thing to do, in my opinion. That is, especially given the fact that none of these three names are beating Kazuchika Okada, who I have advancing out of the Gold League. Now, with that sorted, we move to the Blue League, where things get a whole lot more dicey. There's some really sick names in here, no doubt, but there's nobody on the level of a Hangman, Okada, or Jay White to really lock as a finalist pick. The closest one I'd say though is definitely Ricochet, so I have him going through. More credibility for someone they're very clearly trying to build up across AEW is always good. And in the spirit of that, I'm gonna go with Shelton Benjamin to meet him in the block finals. What puts him over some of those other names to me is the fact that he's associated with the Hurt Syndicate. That group could dominate AEW for a good amount of time, so having one of their guys dominate a C2 block would be very fitting. So the finals of the Blue League is now Ricochet versus Shelton Benjamin, and I think I have to go with Ricochet. My idea for this is Shelton beats Ricochet in the block, but after such a grueling tournament, after so many matches in a row, Shelton just can't keep up with Ricochet. It's a simple story to tell, and I think sometimes that's pretty perfect. So 
It's what I'm going with here. Now, after all that, we're left with the Continental Classic 2024 finals of Ricochet versus Kazuchika Okada, which, in all honesty, has the potential to be quite funny. But I have faith in the C2 grander forcing Okada to kind of run around a little bit. All seriousness though, I think this final is quirky, I think it's fun, and I think it's one a lot of people could get behind. So look, before Takeshita won the international title, my idea was for him to face Okada here and have him win. But now, since he's unfortunately not going to be here, I have to go with Kazuchika Okada to retain the Continental title and win the 2024 Continental Classic. Whether or not I'm excited for this prediction going through, it kind of depends on how Okada looks in the tournament. Is he trying? Is he delivering the Okada performances we all know he can? If he is, I don't have much of a problem with it. However, if he isn't working very hard, which we've seen him do lately, if we're being honest, it would be kind of rough. But that all remains to be seen. For now, I'm gonna go with it, I'm sticking with it, Kazuchika Okada will win the 2024 Continental Classic. Now, with the C2 all predicted, a finalist given, a winner given, that's going to do it for the video, everybody. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like on this video. Comment down below your C2 entrance, who your winner might be, and even your thoughts on my picks. And also, subscribe to the channel where, no matter what, we're always talking grabs. Thank you all so much for watching. It's been Novi. Much love. Peace.